For those of you who are Apple fanboys out there, you probably recognise that as an Apple Silicon Mac box, but it's not what you're probably expecting, so we'll circle back to that in a minute. But I want to begin by posing the question, if all you're really interested in is the performance of large language models on your local machine, then how do you know when you update to the latest Apple Silicon Mac whether or not it's going to be any good? That's a prop question that I have myself based on this current machine that I bought, which is actually an M1 Max. That I bought over the Black Friday set. After buying it, I've now thought, well, what about the M3 Max? That's the late, later version. Yes, it's that much more expensive, but will I get a huge performance boost over and above what I've already bought? And I couldn't really find an answer to that until now. I've actually found some benchmarks online of different performance of Llama.cpv, which is the underlying um, open source framework that's used by a llama. What we can see on this is a whole range of different specs, Apple Silicon Max ranging from M M1 all the way through to M3 Ultra. If we take a look at these, we can see mine, my current machine, which is the 16 gig uh, M1 Pro, and we can take a look at how it performs there. So we can see that these this collection of benchmarks is actually a load of contributions from tons of people from all over the place um, who are all contributing to the Llama.cpp project. This discussion was generated by Georgi Gurganov, um, and I think it's going to be really helpful to people if they want to decide if they want to upgrade. So it came out 22nd of November last year. Now, the one that I'm probably most interested in is this last Q4, which stands for quanti quantization size and text generation, and this is the tokens per second. Now, when I've been doing tests in the past and I've been doing them on the videos, I've generally been getting about 30, 34, 33, around that sort of mark for um, Llama 2. And that's what uh, we see here on this uh, M1 Pro. We can see that it's also pulling back about 36 um, in the benchmark that we see. We can see on this, what with Apple doing all these really crazy specs with their new M3 models, you know, you've got 8 gig M3s and you've got ones with different CPU and different bandwidth um, for the memory compared to say the M1 versions and it makes it really difficult especially say with the M1 Max that I've bought to know whether or not to upgrade. Anyway looking at this I can see the M1 Pro performs pretty much how I'd expect it to so I've done that a bit earlier as well and it's pretty much on the money for what's been stated here if we bump it up to the M1 Max, which is what I've got here, we can see that we're getting double that, which kind of figures because then we've got twice the amount of CPU cores there. Um, and that's pretty much across the board. Everything is doubled. If we step up to, say, the M3 Max, which is obviously all the way at the bottom here, we can see what sort of performance we're getting there. And over and above what you're getting with the um, M1 Max, so the M1 Max being the 64 gig version that I've got here, it doesn't look that great. And generally with the machine learning videos that I've kind of done, I've looked at in the past, this is kind of the what they imply as well, that the M1 was such a good jump in terms of Apple Silicon and over and above the Intel architectures that existed before, that the M3 isn't that great to be upgrading to. Certainly for... The, twice, the cost of twice the price um, for me, that doesn't seem to be that great a deal. So we can see here we're getting text generation, so slightly increased text generation there. So you've got a slightly decreased bandwidth in terms of the memory, which has been reduced to 300 gigabytes a second. On the M1 Max, it's 400. So in order to get the uh, 400 gigabyte a second on M3 Max, you've got to jump all the way up to the 40 core version, which is $4,000 starting price, uh, which is twice what I've paid for this. And the reason for me getting this is that basically I can get rid of my M1 Pro and pretty much only pay a few hundred dollars uh, difference between that and this one. And I've been really tentative about upgrading, but I think this will an answers my question that actually it's a really good um, version. So I think I'm going to unbox this as a result and just try and run Llama 2 on it and see what sort of um, benchmarks I'm getting for a Llama. 
So yeah, with all that said, let's get it open and see if this Mac actually matches up to these benchmarks. I'm no longer a reefer boy, this is a brand new one, so... I've never been able to do that before. Mmm, smell that new tech smell. Okay, let's get this open, get things set up. Wow, oh, that's thoroughly stuck on. Hello. So it's a bit later in the day now, a bit darker, um, but I do have my new M1 Max started with a Llama downloaded with Llama 2 on it. Um, and I got it in verbose mode so uh, I can see what sort of speed. I have not updated the OS, so that's one little difference in comparison that I've uh, to my what I've done earlier on my M1 Pro. And I'm just going to ask it why is the sky blue? Because that's what every first prompt is. And we can see that it's responding. We're getting about 58 tokens a second. So nearing that range of 60 that I was talking about earlier. Um, if I bring up the performance benchmark, so you can see it, so you can see it here, it should be getting around, according to this, it says, oh, in fact, actually 54 tokens a second. So we're doing slightly better there, 58. Um, I will also do another, I'm going to write, get it to write an essay. I think that's how it spells Trevithic. Something to please my Cornish relations there. Just because this is a bit of a more, okay, so we've got 52 tokens a second, so it's a bit more text that we're responding with there rather than a short thing um, and finally let's write the fib and fibonacci sequence in python cool so these are the three that i did as tests earlier and i can see that i'm getting much quicker responses um, yeah, so uh, this seems this seems to be fairly on the money to this this kind of uh, be performance benchmark comparison. I think that for the price that I've paid for it, this represents pretty decent value for money. I can see that if I was jumping up to say the M3 Max, that some of the benchmarks would be improved. Uh, so these certain um, quantization models and the prompt processing etc but for my purposes i don't actually think i'm going to use them i'm not a data engineer I'm not a machine learning buff i am a developer and i'm using these things for experimentation and i don't want to pay a five grand price tag to apple in order to just experiment with those things and in fact actually if i was making a purchase and i was getting into machine learning then something like a much beefier graphics card might be um the way to go um yeah so i hope you've enjoyed this video kind of random one got a new mac i want to unbox it and i've had it sat underneath my uh, legs for the last couple of months and now i'm fairly certain that i've got a fairly decent uh, bang for my buck I need to upgrade this to a different OS because we can see we're still running on an old version here. So I'm going to go off and do that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like and maybe subscribe to the channel if you did. Um, maybe consider watching another video on Alama. One will pop up in a minute. Okay, bye for now. Bye.